And here we go, July 5th, day after 4th of July. Hope everyone had a great time. This is Mike Lodge. I am the business advisor. I hope you all had a great time, that you went out and saw some fireworks, had some picnics, had some good food, had some hot dogs, hamburgers, American apple pie. I haven't had apple pie in a long time. Well, maybe I should go out and get some, but I'm on the diet. Listen. I enjoy the 4th of July. I enjoy it so much, and I enjoy looking at all the pictures. I did a, I was going through my Instagram yesterday, and I was looking at all of these houses that had flags hanging from their, from their rooftops and windows and on the side of their house. I mean, it was, it was a really beautiful sight to see. And I was walking through my neighborhood, and I saw the same thing. I saw a lot of houses with a lot of flags on it. It's nice to see the American flag. It always makes me feel very proud. And I tell you, when you're in a foreign country, I don't know if you've traveled abroad, but when you're in a foreign country and you go past an American embassy or an American business that has an American flag in it, you just feel proud. You feel proud. Hey, that's my country. However, the Gallup poll a day before a day before the 4th of July, came out with a poll. And it said um, just 31% of American adults have confidence in the United States government, down from 56%. The highest in the G7 in 2006, a whopping 69% of Americans said they did not have confidence in the United States government. Now, that's sad. Now, the U.S. in the past has followed closely by the U.K. with just 33% of British adults having confidence in its government. So as we see inflation uh, destroying our economy and government decisions destroying the economy, it makes it sad to watch. Because you see this happening and you think, why are we making such bad decisions? Why are they going into such a different direction than what Americans want to see? We don't want inflation. We don't want a recession. And and then and on top of it, we get lied to. Oh, no, 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 we have no inflation. No, we don't have inflation. Then we get hit with the hardest inflation that we've ever been hit with. But you can understand why Americans don't have confidence in their government. Now, I truly believe that we Americans believe in each other. We know when tough gets tough, time gets tough, I mean, you and I, we're going to pull together and we're going to make it through whatever situation we have. We have to admit that this government has had some bad leaders before. And we can get through bad leaders this time. However, this time is like triple time as worse as any other time in history. Because we have individuals making political decisions, but they're not making decisions based on what the needs of the American people are. We're going through tough times, and what do they do? They go climate change. We're going through tough times, so what do they do? They create a war in Ukraine and send billions of dollars to Ukraine when the American people could use it here. Instead of looking at the homeless, government decides, oh, let's let's build a better Internet structure. I don't think that's what Americans are worrying about. What Americans are worrying about is what are the farmers doing? Are they creating enough food? Are the bridges and roadways, are they getting improved? Are we looking at the electrical grid that they want to push electrical cars on us, but it's still as weak as ever? Nothing's being improved on it. We're having blackouts and brownouts during the summer months because 
There just isn't enough electricity in the grid. So you see, there's a lot of things that Americans want to see the government working on, but they're not. Instead, they're working on political agenda issues, and the American people say, enough of this. I saw something this morning that really amazed me. Now, as you know, the the uh, rental markets in the high-rise buildings, they're, they're almost dead. No one's working in these offices anymore because it's just too expensive. And so companies are beginning to default. But there's one group of people who say, okay, let's take some of these old buildings and and gut some of the floors out. And, hey, let's build a farm in there. We can grow vegetables in these, in these old, not old, but in, in these office buildings that are dead. Let's put something in there that we could produce food for our community. I thought, you know what, that's not bad. That's not a bad idea. What would happen if every single um, city had an office building that grew food inside there? Now, there's a whole bunch of different ways to grow food with with uh, putting seeds and plants in water pods and letting them grow. There's a lot of different ways. And I'm thinking, you know what, maybe we need to think out of the box. Maybe even cities can provide food for their for their uh, citizens. So why not take some of these buildings that are abandoned and put people in there? One other thing that uh, impressed me, and I have been on this road for a long time when hiring individuals. I've never hired an individual based upon their degree or their education. What I have always based my bringing this individual on board is what experience level do they have that is going to help my company. I have, listen, I have hired a lot of bookkeepers who do not have a college accounting degree, but they have the experience level to do what they need to do. And they work harder and faster at it. LinkedIn came out and they said the next holy grail of the labor market will be proven skills rather than college degrees. And then they offer you a way how to stand out. I tell you, if you can show me or if you can show employers what your skill level is at, what your what you're able to bring into the company to make our process better, that's what we're going to look at. And I have looked at that for years and years and years. I tell you, I have hired some tax attorneys who were so bad at their job, and they came from Ivy League schools, but they were so bad from uh, uh, so bad at their job that even individuals that had no degree but had tax practitioner background had more experience level than the attorneys. Skill level. That's what it's about. It's about skill level. Now, I have always believed in skill level. And even for myself, I still try to improve my skills. I tell you, LinkedIn, by the way, as we talk about LinkedIn, LinkedIn has really good online programs that you can take uh, to improve your skills in negotiations, in accounting, in resolving conflict within the workplace. They have all kinds of different skill levels that you can build upon. And at the end, they give you a certificate of, of, of your achievement of accomplishing that thing. And they're very good teachers. I've taken a lot of them because I always like to learn. Even though I've got a degree and everything else, I have always said I have got to learn more and more and more every day. That's always been my objective is to learn. And so I use LinkedIn a lot. And there are other programs out there that also give uh, good learning experiences also. So if you can improve your skill level, improve it to the future employer, you are going to be on a higher plane than all the rest of the people. Listen, 
I've said this so many times, that you can have, you can go to the best school, but not get an education. I've seen it so many times. I remember I had a, uh, a mom once tell me, after she had paid all this money for education for her children, she says, they went to school for an education, but they never got educated. And the problem is that they have become so, schools have become so involved in social politics that they have forgotten about how to teach people to do good jobs. Individuals who are going to these Ivy League schools are not getting the best education. They truly are not. Now, what you need to focus on is how can you make yourself better at your job? What skill levels can you improve that no one else is doing? It's always about improving yourself. It's always about that continuing education. I look at myself, my gosh, I've got to get every year, I've got to get 60 hours of CPE in mediation. Every year I've got to get 25 hours in tax in order to keep my licenses and be, be able to sign off on, on tax returns. Every year it's something. And so every year I'm also writing books on trying to help people to be good leaders. I have a book right now that's out on Amazon that you can go to and it's called You Can Lead. And it's about developing your skill levels. Leaders are always focused on developing the skill levels. All the time. And you should also. I don't care if you are a clerk. What can you do better as a clerk? What can you do better as a customer service? How can you improve your communication skills? What certificate programs can you go out on communications? Uh, There is so much that you can look at. But... You need to do it. I'm always going to keep that there because I've always believed in this philosophy that for me, the holy grail in my labor market will be the proven skills. And so if you can focus on those proven skills, you will be ahead of the game. And listen, it doesn't matter if we're in a recession, if we are in a depression, if we are in inflation, if we're in good times or bad times. It doesn't matter. It means that you continue to improve your skill levels. It's vital. Not just for your employer, but for yourself also. Because the more that you learn, the better you become. And there is a course for whatever you're doing out there in this world. Whatever job or title that you hold, there is skill level training out there that can improve you. Listen, if uh, you would like to have more time with me, and if you're in business, and if you would like to sit down with a business coach or a business advisor and go over confidential information that you don't want anybody else to hear about and that you just want some guidance, You can book a a schedule with me online at www.lodge-co.com. If you have a business question, send it to thebusinessadvisor at gmail.com. If you want to get to my books, you can go to amazon.com and type in Michael Lodge, or you can go, you can lead, comma, Michael Lodge, and then we'll take you to all, all the books that I have out there. I have five books out there. Everybody... Happy after 4th of July, and let's be patriotic throughout the month of July. This is our month. Let's be good Americans, and let's become better Americans. Talk with you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you for your grace, your amazing grace. Thank you for the way that you forgive me every day. Thank you for your grace, your amazing grace. Great is your mercy. Thank you for your.